Hello, Monetization Nation. Welcome back to another episode with Shane Barker. In episode one, we discussed Shane's story to become an expert influencer marketer and some of his secrets for influencer marketing. In today's episode, we will be discussing some of Shane's secrets to product launches and content marketing. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. Okay, so talk to me about home runs. I would say, um, I think other home runs for me, and I don't necessarily have specific examples, but when I was doing a lot of speaking, I did a lot of international speaking in Sri Lanka and Thailand, and I mean, I've been actually all over the world speaking. Um, for me, a, like a big win is when I have people come up to me and they say, Hey, I read your content and you help me do this and you help me do that. It's, I don't have any specific names necessarily, but just, um, I'm a very humble individual and it's like doing these types of interviews. When you talked about what I've done, I kind of joked around about it, you know, when we were off the air and I was like, Oh, it sounds, I want to be like that guy when I get older. Cause I'm still very. I'm very grounded and I like to stay that way. I don't feel like um, I'm an influencer. I mean, I understand that I have, you know, some influence and, and I, I've built that up and I have a good brand, but it's um, it's like when I would come off of stage and people would come up to me, you know, I mean, I'm not Tony Robbins by any means, but I would have people come up to me and say like, Hey, you're, you know, like the stuff that you, you've actually really helped my business because you wrote this and you wrote that. It really helped us figuring this out or, you know, or I'll do like, you know, interviews or I'll, you know, I'll answer people's questions. People will send me a question through email and I'll answer it through like a Loom video and send it to them. And they're like, I just, I never thought you would even responded. And for me, that's, that's valuable, right? Like if I can touch lives of, you know, cause I don't think what I've done, I think it's, I think it's awesome. And it's only the beginning for me, but I, I'm, but I don't, I don't know. I just, it's, it's like, I don't know. I just, there's a lot more to, to happen. And the thing is, if I can use what I've learned and leverage it and, and to educate and to, to, to help others, like that's, that's really where I'm at. Like I'm at that point where it's like, what can I do to make an impact? And I would love to, to leave an impact on the world and in a positive way, especially during crazy times, you know? So that's your why is the, the impact for good. That's it. That's, right. I know it's very, cl- very cliche, but it's, no. it is, man. It's, it's in my heart. It's like, I just, if once again, I, I think about if I, you know, if I went to bed, not knowing that I wasn't helping anybody, it would, I don't think I'd go to bed. Yeah. Which yeah, is I love it. It brings meaning to life community. Okay. Let's move to product launches. I know you're an expert of product launches as well. Uh, can you give me a couple of maybe three secrets of that you think are essential to a successful product launch and maybe a story of someone that's, that's done a product launch really well? Yeah. So the thing with product launches, the, the interesting, like fun fact with product launches is a, a lot of people a lot of people don't realize that the 80% of your work is done before you even launch the product. Right. And so I get a lot of people that will come to me and let's say they're going to do a crowdfunding campaign. They're like, Hey, I just went live and I need, I have got 30 days to promote it. Like, what do I need to do? And I'm like, take it down. Like, yeah, like you're like, you've already, you've got 29 days. That's just not enough time. Like most of the PR and all that work is done before you launch, right? That's, you gotta be really ready for that moment of, when you launch is the the easiest part for the most part, because it's now you've got all this stuff that's happening behind the scenes, but you've got to prepare for that. You've got to, you know, get your press release out. You got to talk to the news stations. You got to talk to bloggers that maybe will write a review about it. Like you, you've got to get that, figure out what that traction is going to be and how do you plan for that? Right. And that's, that's way before you you launch anything. So another thing about product launches is um, it's really, really important to, to look at history um, of anybody that has tried to launch a product that maybe is similar to yours and what they did and whether they were successful or they weren't successful. Um, the beautiful thing about the internet is you can pretty much find out anything about anybody. Uh, um, you know, and there's softwares you can go and see what kind of, you know, PPC ads they put up. You know, you can kind of see what they went after when it comes to keywords, or you can go and find out who backlinked to them for this launch and you can find out who interviewed them at news articles. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting ways to kind of reverse engineer to be able to see what somebody did to be able to get their product to, you know, either be successful or not be successful. Um, so that's what I would recommend. I mean, there's, once again, there's a lot, it's the internet. So you can, there's all kinds of tricky stuff. Like I could, you know, probably find somebody's social security number if I need to, not that I'm doing that kind of stuff. But my point is, is like, you can find anything on the internet, right? Like 
And so you just, but you've got to be prepared for that. You got to figure out once again, what is my competition doing? What did they do successfully? Or why did they fail? And then how can we make things better and improve upon that? So that's once again, a lot of preliminary stuff that happens before you actually go and you're actually launching anything. To summarize this, you're saying create an audience that trusts you and likes you. So you've got a following, then create a great unique product and then have scarcity and urgency. So they mm -hmm. have to act quickly. And uh, what did I miss? Did that no, yeah, 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 yeah. Advance. exactly. That's exactly it. And make sure that you're, you're creating a buzz. Like, what are you doing to get people excited about this, right? Because yeah. product launches happen every single day. So it's like, what makes you different and why should people be excited? You know, and when you talk about like, you know, crowdfunding or anything like that, we, we, we should do a lot of, it's like, you know, you, know, you got to pull on heartstrings. You got to educate people why I want to, you know, why you should give me your hard $100 or $150. And sometimes it's the perks, but it's really like, what is like, why? Like, you got to educate me. You got to, you know, pull on my heartstrings. You got to let me know, like, why would I, you know, why would I want to spend my hard-earned money on this product? Like, what makes you different than every other product that launches every other day on any of these platforms? And so, you know, it's, it comes down to messaging. You know, it comes down to like having a very clear message of, understanding exactly who you're going to go after and then going after them aggressively. So I want to ask you to share maybe your top three secrets about content marketing and maybe a story of someone that uh, has been very effective with their content marketing. Yeah. So content marketing, um, one thing that I think people, and maybe they, they, if you've tried it and you understand this, if you haven't tried it, it's just consistency. It's about being present and being there and putting out the content. Um, writing content, like in the beginning, it was just me writing on my blog. I obviously have a team now, so it's very easy for me to, you know, to write because I'm not writing anymore because I have my team that does it. Um, but, you know, you just have to, you have to know that it's, you know, Rome wasn't built in, in one night. So the thing is, is it's going to take a while. And so this is, I don't care if you're doing video content. I don't care if you're doing a podcast. I don't care if you're doing blog posts. If you put up two blog posts and expect to make history or put together two podcasts and expect to like, you know, be number one, it's a long, I mean, think about if you, you know, it's like people that want to, you know, work out and you want to get a six pack, like it's not working out twice, right? That's not, that's not going to get you the six pack. Like it takes time. Like content marketing is a long-term strategy that takes time. Um, but I will tell you like my website, I get 160,000 people a month and I, it's all inbound marketing. Like my, my, let me take that back. My team does do some outreach but mainly it's inbound marketing. I get tons of leads and we, we qualify leads and have qualifying questions and stuff that we obviously can bring people through the funnel. But it really comes down to putting out like consistent content and being consistent and knowing, saying, hey, listen, if I'm going to want to become an Instagram influencer, I want to do this for one year and I'm going to consistently put out content, you know, twice a day or once a day or whatever that is, but just show up. Make, get that stuff out there and then you evaluate it and you're going to evaluate after three months and then six months and then nine months and then one year. And now we say, okay, are we ready to start taking on brands and start doing stuff? So, you know, it's, there's no, there's no substitute for hard work, right? Like you're, if you, if you have a second, second, a seven second ab and you're looking for the three second ab, you're, you're, you're missing something here. You gotta, you gotta work hard. So content marketing is long-term, um, but huge things can happen because what happens with most people in the world and anything that happens is people quit. So it's like, they want to do something for a little bit. It's the people that it's the YouTube stars right now, their first videos that they did on YouTube were terrible. I haven't even seen them. And I can tell you, they were terrible. The first podcast that I ever did my interview, haven't listened to it. There's a reason for that. I'm sure it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely guaranteed it was terrible. So it's like, you just got to start. You got to start doing that stuff and be consistent and, and, you know, and push and you'll, it'll evolve over time. Right. I mean, that's kind of the goal is like, you got to start, you start doing something and then things will get better over time. Um, other things with content marketing is um, it's these days, it's a lot easier because there's softwares and there's all kinds of things that you can do to, you know, I mean, we're doing a thing today on zoom, right? We can, uh, otherwise it's like, you didn't, there wasn't all these, these technologies and softwares and tools that can make it easier to be able to produce content. Another thing that I would recommend with content and, and Nathan, I know you do a good job of this is, when you produce a piece of content, how do you cut that up into other pieces of content, right? So you've got your, you know, you've got your blog that you do. So we're doing this. So it's, it's you know, it could be a video. Great. We have the video. And then all of a sudden you cut that up and you put that into your podcast and then you can cut up pieces of this and put it on Instagram. You can put it on LinkedIn. Like, what do you do to produce one big piece of content? And then how do you 
scale that thing down and make it into multiple pieces of content because we're spending a lot of time and money and resources to be able to produce that one piece. And then how do you produce 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 pieces off of that one piece? Yeah, I love it. Um, the repurposing of content. That's a great strategy. Okay, let That's me summarize. Okay. So your your strategies for content, your, your top secrets for content marketing are think long-term, right? This isn't a, a quick fix, get rich quick scheme. This is a long-term strategy, but it's kind of like a flywheel, right? It takes a lot of energy to get it going, but then if you get it going, it keeps going. And you talked about the 160,000 uh, visits to your site every every month that you're getting is recurring traffic you don't have to pay for um, because you've set up that flywheel. So th it's the long game. Uh, the That's second one is consistent processes. And you've talked about, it's kind of like the E-Myth Revisited where they talk about it's all about the processes and the, the, the systems that you set up. So think about setting up being consistent and doing it every day and setting up the process so it just it just happens consistently. Um, and then the last one is being patient with yourself, understanding that um, your first episode is going to be horrible uh, and, and just learn and grow and get better. And it's more important to be okay. prolific than perfect. E embrace it. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I, my students at UCLA, I would show them my first blog post. And then half of them were probably wondering how I became an instructor because they're like, how did, how did you even make it through the process after reading that? And it was terrible. I still have it on my blog, actually. And yeah. But my point of showing them that is, I like, guess what? Yeah, it was terrible. But guess what? I started. And what it is today is nowhere close to what it was nine years ago. But the goal of it is, is like, once again, oh, I don't I hate video. I love look good on video. Well, you won't look good on video your first time. Like, it's not going to be a great setup. It's not going to be all this. But you do it, right? And we have iPhones and everything else. That you can produce content at scale fast. It's, it's pretty insane these days. Like, we didn't, you know, back in the next, back in the day, I sound like I'm 100. Oh, back in the day when I was... <laughs> walking up the you know snow embankments and no i mean but now you can do quality content like video i mean i could do a video right now pop up my iphone and you know produce a, a piece of content and have it edited down and have it out in three days yeah why did you leave that first blog post up yeah so i left it up to, it's a reminder you know it's a reminder of like my past of like you know like that I remind, because the problem with most people is there's always an excuse not to start. Oh, I don't have this. I don't have the right equipment or, oh, I wrote it, but I, you know, I want to change a few things. Okay. Like let's, so what are you waiting for? Like a, a green light? Cause it's, there's some, there's a few different sayings. God, I can't remember them now, but it's like the premise of it being that like, if you don't ever launch, then you, of course you're never going to succeed. Right. It was like, you know, you're worried about failure, but if you don't launch, you're, you're going to, nobody's going to know, like you don't even have that opportunity to fail and grow. And so that's, for me, it's like, just do it. Like, if you want to do a podcast, go do it. Do we have equipment? Like you literally for a few hundred bucks can start a podcast and you can tweak it. I mean, my first microphone that I had was terrible. And I, I think it probably sounded, I know it sounded terrible, but the idea is, is like, but now I've got professional equipment and I've got, you know, now we're in the top 33 and I'm excited about that. But the goal, you know, my original goal was just to do a podcast. I just wanted to start talking with people and, and interview great people and be able to educate people. And now it's turned into something that I actually can monetize and have been able to do that. And so that's, what's been awesome. But you just, if you're worried about it, we were all worried about it. Like I, I, you know, I, I knew I wasn't going to sound good on this podcast and it wasn't going to interview. Well, I was no professional interviewer, but it didn't matter. Like I still jumped in and act like I knew what I was doing. I mean, I'm between you and I, I still act like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Nobody knows that I don't <laughs> got them. Got to Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Just keep pushing forward. Just act like you know what you're doing. You'll be fine. Another reason why I love that you have that first blog post still there is it, it shows people that you've, you've gone on the journey that they want to go on, right? You've gone through this process and you started here and now you're here and it gives them hope that they can do the same thing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, you know, Zoe, my client, the, the her the way her content that like would produce the most sales for is before and after pictures so you'd have a big old booty that every, all the, let's say the girls have and the really beautiful booty that all the girls want and they would go oh my god that's me today and in six months i can do this it's the same thing with this i leave that blog article up so i can show people like yeah that's where i started humble beginnings terrible like i'd like mm -hmm. read that it's like people are that's like your oh, before and after picture <laughs> it is it literally is it's like now you look at this old piece of article that's terrible and now you look at the one that i'm producing now not even comparable, but I'm not shy about where I started. I'm not shy to say that in the beginning, it was crap. And my content was, you know, I was putting it out there to help educate people, 
but there was no, there wasn't tons of value in it. I was just writing something and trying to help as much as I could. Now I feel like what we produce is, but obviously it's, you know, I've got a team now. Now, like you talk about, the machine is going, like I can't stop the machine. Not that I would want to stop it, but it's, that's, it's happening. Thank you so much, Shane, for sharing your stories and knowledge with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, prepare for product launches before the launch. Most of the work should be done beforehand. Number two, look at how launches have gone for similar products and see how we can learn from them and improve upon them. Number three, focus on what makes our products different from the many products that launch every day. Number four, content marketing can take a long time, so we should be consistent and patient. Number five, we must start somewhere with our content marketing. Even if we're not where we'd like to be with it, we will get better over time. Number six, we can repurpose our content to be used on many different platforms to give our content much more reach. If you enjoyed this interview and want to learn more about Shane or connect with him, you can find him on LinkedIn or check out his website at shanebarker.com. And there's links to both of those sites in the blog post for this episode. Did you like today's episode? Then please follow these channels to get free digital monetization content. Number one, get a free monetization assessment of your business or subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, please subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel or podcast. And number three, please follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. Where have you found success in your product launches? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining me today for this episode. I wish you success in your product launches and content marketing. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.